Hello, my name is Azad Aguljanov, and today I want to present you VALMET, a tool for high throughput annotation of small molecule mass spectra by the modification tolerance search of chemical databases. Uh, the main uh, motivation to study small molecules are, of course, natural products, which are small reactive compounds produced by microbes, plants, and some animals. And these compounds are medically important as they are sources of many drugs and also industrially important because they have um, application in agriculture and food. Uh, small molecules are a very diverse um, class of chemical compounds with a varying structure and size. And uh, one um, thing with uh, natural products is that many natural products come in different flavors and some are yet to be discovered. For example, here you can see structures of smenomize produced by smenospongia aurea metabolo, which have anti-cancer activity. And uh, these uh, molecules share um, most of their structure, but they still different with uh, um, the different modifications. And it is important to be able to identify those guys from their mass spectra. Uh, there are several approaches to uh, the spectral annotation. And the first one is based on spectral similarity, where experimental spectra are compared to spectral libraries that contain spectra from known molecules. Uh, the other approach is the database search. Uh, which relies on in silico fragmentation of molecules from chemical databases, and then this fragmentation pattern is compared to the experimental spectrum leading to identification. And the third approach are the novel identification methods, uh, which uh, are able to uh, predict molecules directly from spectrometry data and do not rely on chemical databases or uh, spectral libraries. Uh, from the perspective of identification of the variants, all these approaches have uh, their advantages and disadvantages. For example, spectral similarity networks are able to identify variants, but uh, the spectral libraries are rather limited. Uh, chemical database search methods uh, rely on chemical databases that are much, much larger than available today spectral libraries, but they are only able to uh, identify exact matches. And uh, the novel identification is able to uh, identify variants and even novel compounds, but uh, other performance is not that great. And uh, our approach, VARNET, brings ability to discover variants to database search methods. Uh, VAMET is a part of and is built upon NPD tools, which is a tool set for database search of mass spectra. So uh, here is the VAMET pipeline. It starts with the database preprocessing, and then when we analyze experimental mass spectra, first we select candidates from the database and uh, try to apply uh, modification to these candidates. And after that, we score uh, this uh, modified variance of the molecule. And now I will go through each of these steps in more detail. And uh, our um, uh, tool relies on a fragmentation model. Uh, under which we assume that uh, in mass spectrometer, the most uh, probable bond breakage is breaking uh, the natural carbon, oxygen carbon, or carbon-carbon bond. So given a molecule, we uh, find all these uh, breakable bonds in it, and then it transforms to this graph. And uh, then we fragment this graph in all possible ways 
Uh, so we remove uh, each of uh, these bond types or a pair of bonds uh, so that uh, the molecule is uh, broken uh, into exactly two fragments. And uh, uh, after that, we have this first level fragments here. And when we uh, for all of these fragments, and the process is repeated, and then we have the children fragments. And this uh, fragmentation graph is uh, pre-processed and stored, and later used in scoring. And uh, apart from these uh, fragmentation graphs, uh, for each molecule, we also store uh, its first level fragments. So here, as you can see, uh, these first level fragments correspond to, um, so they have these masses, and we uh, merge all masses of first level fragments of all molecules in the database, and uh, but uh, still uh, we index uh, this set of uh, fragments by the original molecule, and in the end we have an indexed vector of first level fragment masses, which we will later also use for speed up. Uh, so uh, now, uh, after we preprocessed our database, uh, we are starting our annotation pipeline. And uh, first of all, uh, given a spectrum, we select candidate molecules from the database. And uh, it is done in two steps. In the first step, we uh, select all molecules that fit uh, the spectrum mass within a certain range. So here, big delta is the uh, mass of maximum allowed modification, which can be set by the user. Uh, but uh, in practice, uh, this will lead to having too many uh, candidates uh, that uh, will make our scoring computationally infeasible. So we uh, compare um, our experimental spectrum to this pre-computed set of first-level peaks, and we select only molecules which have at least k peaks in common with the experimental spectrum, even before we apply the modification. And uh, therefore, we decrease the amount of candidates, which leads to a speed up of our tool. Uh, on the next step, we uh, select a position for the modification. And again, we do this uh, comparing uh, modified molecules to experimental spectrum and uh, select uh, the best position uh, for the modification based on this matching. And again, this can be done pretty fastly and it is much faster than scoring all of these variants uh, individually. Uh, then uh, we uh, apply to the selected variant uh, our scoring model, which is uh, used uh, in uh, mold discovery for regular database search. And this uh, uh, scoring mo model takes into account intensity of the match peak, bond type, and parent fragment of each matched or unmatched fragment. So here we annotate the whole fragmentation graph with spectrum and compute a probabilistic score. And as a refinement step, uh, we, um, so uh, for uh, each spectrum, we have a list of identification. And for like top 10 identifications, we can do this full scoring where we try each and every position for the identification. And that's how we get this uh, figure on the right, where we, you can see a distribution of scores uh, on the molecule, and this uh, can give us some information about the location of uh, modification site. 
And now uh, we are coming to results. So we used uh, annotated spectra from GNPS uh, for the benchmarking and uh, match them with the chemical uh, database, uh, uh, which is uh, NP Atlas and ground truth annotations from GNPS for the spectra. And uh, the maximum modification mass uh, was 50 deltons, you know, uh, benchmarking. Uh, so uh, uh, this is uh, one net performance using different sets of parameters for uh, candidate selection and for applying modification algorithm. Uh, so uh, here, uh, the brute force is uh, when we select basically all candidates, so they share at least one peak with the spectrum. And uh, this peak can be either shared, uh, so the mass is exactly uh, the same as the mass of the fragment, or it can be shifted uh, uh, so that uh, the mass of uh, uh, the fragment is a sum of the mass of the peak and uh, modification. And we uh, score all the variants here. So when modification is applied to all the positions. And uh, when we uh, go here, uh, so uh, we here assume that at least three peaks are shared and the modification is applied only to the best position and this leads us to a significant uh, speed up and uh, memory efficiency. Uh, so uh, here uh, we assess the accuracy of our net and uh, to do so we need to define what uh, we consider to be a correct identification. We do that based on the model similarity with the ground truth and maximum common substructure. As you can see, uh, the accuracy is not that great for lower masses, uh, but uh, on the uh, uh, on the figure below, uh, we show a number of candidates per spectrum for these mass ranges, and uh, we have uh, a bias in our data. So here, um, the search space is much larger, which might partially explain why the accuracy is not that great. For the case study, uh, we used to be Smanimai dataset. Um, we applied one net to Smanspongiaria metabolome. And first, what we did is we analyzed the spectral dataset with uh, molecular networks. And uh, as you can see here, uh, the Smanimai network uh, consists of uh, to connect a component. And uh, uh, blue um, nodes are uh, nodes that are annotated with a spectral uh, library. And the red node here is the node that was missed by spectral library but was annotated by Barnet. Uh, so uh, here is uh, the annotation of that node with a sminimite E from NP Atlas. And uh, as you can see, according to Varmet, uh, the most probable modification site is located somewhere here in the molecule. And uh, the mass difference can be explained uh, by addition of three carbon atoms and uh, pollution of two hydrogens. We further retrieved sminimite F from ChemSpider and matched it uh, with uh, the same spectrum. And as you can see here, uh, Varnet predicts um, modification on this part of the molecule, which leads us to this um, hypothesis of a novel smenomite variant um, discovered by Varnet. In the end, I want to thank my collaborators, Alexei Grevich, uh, who is leading Human Microbrain System Bioinformatics Group at Hibs and Albert University, and Hossein Mahimani, uh, from Mahimani Lab at uh, Carnegie Mellon. And I also want to thank uh, the uh, Zalant University for funding my positions through Next8.
project. And thank you for your attention.